tonight on The Shaquille Show. Appearances by Deja Jackson, entertainment and sports attorney. Entrepreneurs, Vashon Lamar, president of All You Can Be Foundation. Terrell, manager of Twisted Hair Salon. Shalom, the hairstylist to the star. Featuring music videos by international indie artists J. Max and Blowfly. And part three of the Saga of Gigi. And your hostess, Shana Queen. Hey, I'm Shaqueen, and you're watching Shaqueen Live on MMTV. And Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Tonight on the show, it's our season finale, and we have some phenomenal guests. We have the third and final part of the saga of Gigi, and we have Vashon Lamar telling us all the wonderful things he's doing in business. Make sure you stay tuned. It's going to be really good. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Ty, and you're tuned into Shaqueen Live on MMTV. Hi, I'm Vashon Lamar with All You Can Be Entertainment Foundation, uh, co-owner of the Gym Animals and owner of the Orlando Blue Spiders, and you're watching Shaqueen Live on MMTV. We're back and we're sitting here with the entrepreneur Vashon Lamar. Everyone give him a hand. Hand to Lamar. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> All right, so we're, let's get right into it. Tell everyone what it is that you exactly do, all your many facets. Okay. Um, like I said, one of my um, business endeavors is a, a 501c3 not for profit organization okay. called All You Can Be Entertainment Foundation. Okay. And as I was telling you, um, it's basically not like a typical 501c3 not-for-profit organization mm -hmm. because usually not-for-profits handle one specific cause okay. as we handle many causes. And the reason for that is that the world changes every day. So we don't want to just be stuck to in a, in a box just you know helping one out thing. for one cause okay. because let's say something else happens. We want to be ready and available to the public and to the people to mm -hmm. be able to help them as well too. Wonderful. So what what types of things do you, I mean because I, I know there has to be a little bit of a generalization of your area is an entertainment company. Yeah, definitely, so definitely. Um, what who do you help? Who, who well, can you we, help? Well we, we can help just about everyone. So let's say uh, if you need assistance with daycare assistance, um, mm -hmm. we also have have, have had uh, daycare centers as well too wow. uh, to help working mothers and not just working mothers but working families because mm -hmm. sometimes what happens is uh, you have a family, mm -hmm. you may not meet the threshold to get assistance for daycare. Mm. So, you know, if you come to our center, we were able to help you out and get you the, um, assistance, the, the assistance you that you need. Wonderful. That's beautiful. Do you help out artists, uh, models, uh, working, you know, the, the people who it, want to be in the entertainment industry? Yeah, definitely. And that's what the entertainment portion is for. Okay. We help out any and everyone looking to be whatever it is that they want to be in life. Okay. So uh, we're going to talk about that more when we come back and you're watching Shaqueen live on MMTV and we'll be right back. And we're back, and you're watching Shaqueen Live on MMTV, and we're here with Vashon, and he's telling us about his non-for-profit group. So uh, is there any way that people, you know, the ent entertainers can get in contact with you to submit their material if they need help? Yeah, there's, there's actually two ways you can get in contact with me. You can definitely look at the website. Mm -hmm. So all you can be dot weebly dot com. Okay. And then you can also email me at all you can be foundation at yahoo dot com. Okay, wonderful. So um, 
I heard through the grapevine <laughs> that uh, you are dealing with many projects at the moment, and one of them is dealing with obese children yes. and trying to help them become more active. And you have like a whole plan of a cartoon and everything. Can you tell everyone a little bit more about that? Yeah, definitely. We have a whole big experience. The, mm -hmm. the experience is actually called Fame the Experience. Okay. And, and what fame encompasses is fashion, art, music, and education. Oh, wonderful. Okay, so okay. we actually go around the country touring with uh, various artists and new artists and models and new models and wonderful. season models okay. <laughs> as okay. well, too. So. And did the, the process of this leads to about the gym? The, can now, you say it? Yeah, now, uh, <laughs> now, we already explained the fashion, the art, the music. Yes. Now the educational piece comes in. Okay. Now with the educational piece, uh, we've chosen childhood obesity okay. as our number one issue, as well as bullying too. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. So, what 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 are you doing to play your part in this role? Well, what well, are you what you're giving? Basically, we have um, cartoon characters that wonderful. are designed to promote health and fitness for children. I love cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> so, and what's it called? They're called the gym animals. The gym animals. Okay. And yes. and what do the gym, gym animals do? What are they well, like? Well, basically the gym animals are a way, uh, basically a child platform, mm -hmm. a, a way to promote health and fitness through for for children. Okay. And is it is it like some of the cartoons that you see on like Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network and it's, things like that? Um, is it like, is it going to be that interactive thing like Dora? Yeah, actually, there, there's a number of different ways that we actually handle the cartoon. We have mm -hmm. a 2D version, and we also have a 3D version. Oh, wow. You know, because some cool. kids like the older look, some yeah. kids like the newer look. So <laughs> we had to true. mix it up a little bit. Okay, very true. Very, very <laughs> so true. Basically, um, with the cartoons, at the end of each cartoon, or sometimes even during a cartoon, mm -hmm. you will be engaging in some type of exercise oh, or wow. some type of health and fitness activity as well. Oh, cool. Okay, yeah. that's great. So um, we're going to talk more about that as soon as we come right back, and uh, we're also going to talk about the fitness kid. Is that is that his name? Oh yeah, we have uh, we we work with uh, CJ the workout kid. As the well, workout too. kid. All right, we're going to talk about him as soon as we get right back. You're watching Shaquille live on MMTV. <laughs> And we're back with Vashon Lamar, and we were talking about the gym animals and health and fitness for childhood obesity. And um, there's this this little boy, and he's so amazing because he's so fit, and he's called the Workout Kid. Yeah, definitely. His name is uh, CJ the Workout Kid. Okay. Uh, he's a 10-year-old prodigy wow. fitness guru. Yeah, I saw. <laughs> it was amazing, guys. It was, I mean, he did the little football run thing for 40 seconds and like 20 seconds in, I had to stop. So he's amazing and you guys need to watch him. He's on YouTube as well. Yeah, he's correct? actually, he has his own website. It's okay. uh, cjtheworkoutkid.com. Wonderful, wonderful. And uh, he's also on YouTube. You can see some of his clips as well, too. Okay. All right, so shout out to you, CJ, and hopefully uh, more people go and watch you. Working out is great. I need to do it, too. So we all need to look, get a little workout in every now and again. So you also, um, for the gym animals, you have a health and fitness book. Is that correct? Yes, we have um, a variety of books. We have a health and fitness manual. This is the health and fitness manual, which can be purchased from the website. Yeah, you can actually email us, um, okay. like we said, and you email. can actually get a copy of it. Okay. Um, and, and you can also get a copy of the T-shirt. And I think you guys should buy these for your children. Let's promote child things, all right? It's enough of the children being adults. Let's promote some children things. So buy some T-shirts, buy a health and fitness manual, and let's get these kids healthy, all right? So um, as well, you do things in Orlando with a basketball team, is that correct? Yes, yes. I actually have a semi-professional basketball team mm -hmm. called the uh, Orlando Blue Spiders. Okay, wonderful. What so like are are they like winners? Are they are they getting it in? Of course. <laughs> it's my team. <laughs> Is it true that you used to play basketball as well? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, Were you headed to the I'm NBA? Yeah, I actually was actually headed to the NBA. Um okay. 
I played a year of uh, semi-professional basketball mm -hmm. in Rochester, Minnesota. Wow, um, beautiful. I realized, I said, the, the reason why I stopped playing basketball, mm -hmm. um, I felt like I reached my maximum potential playing. Mm -hmm. um, one day I told my cousin, I said, listen, if I score 50 points in this game, I know that I'm good and I don't have to prove anything else to anyone else. Oh, wow. So Did you I, score it? Actually, I had 39 points in the first half Whoa. and uh, one of the teammates got into a fight. <laughs> <laughs> and wow. they ended the game, but that, that was good enough for me. Because, yeah, you know, I got in a lot the first of, half. Yeah, a lot of congratulations on that. So. You know something? I heard somewhere that at one time, a few years back, while you were playing basketball, you made a shot across court. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. That's I, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I used to actually practice the shot. I would actually stand under one rim and toss it to the next rim wow. and see how many times I could make it go in in a row. So, oh, my gosh. Yeah. We, wow, that's something. Okay, so last but not least, before we let Vashon go on and be an entrepreneur, you were having a casting call. Is that correct? Yes, yes. For more information on the casting call, we're actually going to have a family experience event um, in a couple of New York City schools. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're gonna have a more of an adult established event mm -hmm. um, at a couple of venues uh, as well around New York City. Okay, wonderful. So make sure you check out the website and email for more information on that casting call in the new year, 2012. So let's get right for the new year. Let's get our kids fit and get the models right. Yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> so I'd like to thank you so much, Vishon, for sitting with us and talking with us. Now, you can also let them know how they can get in contact with you personally. You have like a Facebook or a MySpace or Well, yeah, else. definitely. Always contact me through my email mm -hmm. at all you can be, uh, foundation. Um, at yahoo.com, I'm always online. Like, I'm, like, religious when it comes attached to... Attached to your computer. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> all right. Well, he's attached to it, so hit him up. And uh, I wish you the best and, and luck in all that you're doing. And uh, I hope that it's going to be very successful in the year 2012. And you have been watching Shaqueen Live on MMTV, and we'll be right back. <laughs> back and you're watching Shaqueen live on MMTV and uh wow we're still in the saga of Gigi and your life I just I, I don't know where to begin so we hit 2002 after 9-11 and what's happening to you um I decided to go to the doctors because I'm not feeling too well um, I, I kept having pain for the last 10 years on the side of my left side by my pelvis and being the hard-headed human being that I tend to be, mm -hmm. I kept ignoring it. I kept ignoring it. And what I need you to understand, it's very important. When your body gives you a, a warning sign, mm -hmm. heed the warning. Yeah. I go to the doctors, mm -hmm. not feeling too well, and I end up with ovarian cancer. Wow. And that was the fight of my life. I went through chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. I've had eight surgeries. Mm -hmm. I have no ovaries, no fallopian tubes, no uterus, no... Just nothing. No cervix. I can never have children in my life again. Um, had I went to the doctors 10 years prior when I started feeling this pain, mm -hmm. something could have been done. But because I've ignored it, nothing could have been done. Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm telling you this is if any of your viewers feel that they have pain, please, please go to the doctors. Um, I'm fine now. It was localized cancer. Mm -hmm. So it was just a matter of getting radiation, treating it, taking everything out, doing strong radiation, and I'm fine now. But it was, how, what, was the, what was the time like in the moment? of? Because, you know, there are a lot of people out there with cancer. Cancer has become... It's getting serious, I, I'll yeah. say. It's, a, I mean, it's all these new. It was, it was, of it was difficult to me. It, it was very, very difficult for me. Um, I couldn't work once again. I couldn't work. Um, I had very little support from my family. My aunt did the best that she could, but she was raising children. So mm -hmm. actually, this is something I went on my own because I wasn't married. Mm -hmm. I didn't have anybody by my side. But mm -hmm. I think the best thing for me was. Um, 
knowing that my friends were there and they were there to help me. And actually, um, through one of my surgeries, my last, um, second to my last one, um, I ended up having a heart attack. And I was put in intensive care. Um, I was allergic to morphine and nobody knew it. And I had just came out of recovery and they give you this machine that yeah. you, you tap. And I remember seeing my best friend Lizette and Janet downstairs. And um, I'm gonna get emotional because I, I remember it like yesterday. And I was trying to wake up and I remember Janet telling me, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm okay. Are you okay? And they were like, I'm like, I'm trying to get up. I'm trying to get up. And I remember the nurse, I went to move forward and I couldn't because I had, mm. like every other time, had like 80 staples in my stomach. And this mm. was one of my, my second to my last surgery. Mm. And I remember my girlfriend looking over me and she goes, Gigi, wake up, wake up. And I remember, I don't care what anybody says, I remember looking to the other side and seeing my grandfather and he had passed already. Mm. And he kept saying, you need to go, you need to go, go back, go back. And I was like, I don't want to go back, I'm going to stay with you. And he's like, no, go back, go back. And um, Janet says, if you, the nurse comes in and she goes, if you feel pain, touch the button. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. And I, I remember looking over and I to, to, to the right and I see Janet there and I see Lisette there and another girlfriend of mine that we're, we don't associate with each other that much anymore. And I remember pressing the button and that was it for me. It was a cold blue. It was, I was put in intensive care. I woke five days later, I woke up five days later in critical condition. Um, but I do remember my, my girlfriend downstairs and was at, I remember them saying, we're not going anywhere. And um, I remember them saying, she's dying, she's dying, she's dying, she's dying. God. And then I don't remember thinking anything after that. Um, five days later, I woke up. I just woke up. I just woke up. I just woke up. And I was like, I went to moon. I'm like, and I just remember seeing my mom wasn't there. Nobody was there. And I remember seeing the two closest people to me in the world are these two girls. Because at the end of the day, no matter how sick you get or no matter what you've been through, you would hope that your mom would be there. And she chose drinking and, and not getting on a plane to see her, her youngest child. Wow. And I think for me that was the hardest thing in the world. That's the first time I realized how strong I am and how I'm gonna make it with anybody by my side, without any by my side. Hence, that's why I call these two women my sisters mm -hmm. because they cleaned me they bathed me, they washed me when nobody else wanted to. And I'm forever grateful to them. Wow. You know? Wow. And and now here you are. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And yeah. now here you are. And this is this is two thousand and three. This is right after nine eleven. Yeah. And so now we're gonna move in. And, and get ready for this, guys, because this is powerful. We're going to come right back, and we're going to talk about 2004, and we're going to leave it at that, but we're definitely going to get into that. You're not ready for this half. Uh, stay tuned. You're watching Shaqueen Live on MMTV. Wow. Well, this is time for the girls, the man account alongside, no other than the one she clean. We'll make the girls the mad when she walk Check on the scene. Mark. Well, tell them my queen. What am I saying now? Check it out, y'all. This is the infamous drama, and right now, y'all tuning in to Shaqueen Live on MMTV. We're back. You're watching Shaqueen Live on MMTV, and we're back with the saga of Gigi, and we are we're in cancer right now. We, we, we just survived cancer. For those of you who are tuning in, we just talked about 9-11, talked about having ovarian cancer, we just, and that's only this half. That doesn't include the first half. So now we're in 2004. Tell me about 2004. What, what kind of year was that? Um, it was very hard for me for two reasons. 2004, I'm on a 911 call to um, a heart attack victim. And I'm on Woodhaven and Myrtle. And um, we get on a head-on collision go through the window of 
of my ambulance. Um, I'm in intensive care for like a couple of weeks in Jamaica Hospital. Nothing serious. I mean, it wasn't, it was just an accident. I will, that's serious. Yeah. Through the window? Through the window. The, 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 the front window, it, which yeah. means the... That yeah. ended my career as a paramedic. Yeah. yeah. The, that ended my career. Um, I went back to work for a little while, um, up until January 05, and I just couldn't do it anymore. I actually dropped the patient oh. because my whole right side had got crushed in the ambulance. Mm. And that was the end of my career as a paramedic. Um, while in 2004, it's a very hard subject for me to talk about. Um, um, 2004, um, I introduced my um, my daughter to her half brother, and um, he's 19 and she's 12, and. Um, I was dead set against it, but not trying to be a hard ass or trying to be the person that I grew up or the child that was a child. You know, I've been molested when I was young as a child. So I was just always shielding my daughter. Well, one day, my daughter's going to school um, on her way to school, and her half brother and his friends tell her they're going to give her a ride to um, school. into it um we're in 2004 your her your daughter is meeting her half brother her half brother for the first time for the first time um she had never met him and now this the situation that we're about to get into this happened the same day a week later no it actually happened a couple of months later okay um i was very dead set set against them meaning because i just knew the type of person he was mm -hmm. and um I would tell her, do me a favor, don't hang out with him. I would tell her, Dad, please. You know, it's not something that, it wasn't normal. Okay. A 19-year-old hanging out with a 12-year-old. I don't mm -hmm. care, half sister, sister. Just wasn't normal. I sensed something was not right you because I was molested as a child. So okay. I knew something wasn't right. Mm -hmm. And um, 2005, um, March, it was a cold, I remember it was a cold day. Um, my grandmother tells her she's going to school. She's off to school. And um, her half-brother, and I'm allowed to say not alleged, happened because he got convicted of the crime. Okay. So technically by law, it's not alleged. Yeah, it happened. It happened. Um, got in, you know, she was waiting at the bus stop on Myrtle and um, 69th Street on her way to school. Him and a couple of his friends come up in a car and tell her, we're going to take you to school. Mm -hmm. So 12 years old, it's your half-brother. Mm -hmm. Somebody that I guess she was looking to be accepted by or her, you know, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what her thinking was, mm -hmm. but it sure wasn't an 18-year-old's thinking. It was just an innocent 12-year-old. And um, she gets in the car and I'm waiting for her. We didn't hear from her. And um, school passed, and it was 3.30, and she didn't get home yet. And 4 o'clock passed, and she didn't get home yet. 5 o'clock passed, she didn't get home yet. 6 o'clock came, and I had to go to the precinct because I was worried. Mm -hmm. Her 
turns out that my daughter was taken all day, put in the basement, and raped. And raped constantly, over and over and over again. By her half-brother. By her half-brother and his friends. And I remember the hardest thing for me was not the rape. I remember going to the hospital and doing the testing and being with a 12-year-old, a 13-year-old. The hardest part for me was going to court that night when they finally arrested him and having her father sit on her brother's side and stand up for him and say, he's a good kid, that's my son. When your son just raped your daughter. And he he protected him. He protected him. He protected him now. Did he ever say anything to your daughter? Did they ever have any communication? No. Um I remember <laughs> I remember this is the man that used to abuse me, remember? This is the man that would just beat me constantly. And he would told me in the, in the courtroom, your daughter's just like you, a whore, piece of shit, garbage, Puerto Rican garbage. She deserved everything she got. He said this to you? He said this to me in the courtroom. And I remember, I need to laugh. They said I flew from one end of the bench to the next. <laughs> yes. Yes, I, I hope there was you know, a stick in your hand at the time. And I know the handcuffs went on me because I just kept beating Yes, yes, beating until there was nothing left. Uh, nothing. And I said to myself, you know, how dare you take a 19-year-old man and, and compare it to, to both your children? A 12-year-old child, a, a baby. Child. She's a baby. She doesn't know any better. All she knew was her half-brother. Was coming to pick her up. And he was going to take me to school. school. Yeah. And who knew that her life would change that, who that, knew? that day? Who knew? And um, he got arrested. And he's doing time. He got 10 years. 10 years. 10 years he got. He should have got life. 10 years. And um, he actually got out on bail because um, mommy and daddy posted bail. Really? I'll never forget that as long as I live. And forget about it, that's my child. Because I couldn't even, I can't even tell you how I feel. But just to think, a 19-year-old, what does a 12-year-old know? What, what, what do you know? What, where has her innocence? Where has it gone? Where was it taken from her? And then taken from her from somebody she knew. Someone she trusted. Somebody she trusted. And actually, 67% of your rapes are people you know, people you trust, yes. people you let through your door, and. Once again, my life changed. Another change. In Another this. change. Wow. Another Your change. life is, and that's not <laughs> even half of it. It's not half of it, you know? That's not even half of it, guys. This is just a little bit, a little tiny piece of the things that Gigi has been through. I wish and I hope and I pray that someone has been affected today, that someone feels better knowing that your choices are not as serious as you think. No, not. I hope that you guys stay tuned because there's so much more with Gigi coming up. Please, please keep your TVs locked. We'll be right back. Should you need any legal consultation, please feel free to call me, Deisha Jackson, Esquire. Well, this is time for the girls that man a count alongside no other than the one she queen. Who make the girls them mad when she a walk on the scene. Well, tell them I queen. What them say now? Delicious 
Back, you're watching Shaqueen live on MMTV, and we're here with Terrell. Terrell, it is. Terrell, Terrell. I'm sorry, Terrell. Yeah. Let's get it right for the ladies. Government. You have to call him Terrell. <laughs> He's on my government. Terrell with the dimples. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, tell me about you. You work here at Twisted Salon. How long yeah. have you been here? Since the beginning. Day one. Since day one. Since they put the paint up. Uh, actually, I was part of it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> the designs myself. around here. No, I, I put together you did myself. This, really? Well, it's, it's quite wonderful in here. I love Thank it. You. Okay, Thank so um, how long have you known Gigi? About three months. Okay. Two, three months. Yeah. What is she like? Tell us about her. She's Gigi. <laughs> what is she not, Gigi? <laughs> well, um, she's she's hot woman. Um, She's one, she's rare because not many people mm -hmm. give you trust from day one. Mm -hmm. Usually you have to earn so much trust. Mm -hmm. you know. Okay, so basically she's stern but loving. Yes. Okay, so that's yes. stern but loving. That's yeah. Gigi for you. So, okay, so tell me a little bit about you. What, what, what's your, what's your thing? What do you do? What do I do? Yes. 
Well, you know, how the, the, in, the, in the way I came to meet in Gigi, it was, mm -hmm. was, you know, I was supposed to be cutting hair in the shop. Okay. Um, you know, within a week or two, and went from that to me, you know, just basically helping to run the place. Oh, excuse me, entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Moving up in life. Yeah, you know, I'm not. I, she's like Batman. I'm like Robin. Whatever right. decision she's making, I'm 100 percent with okay, it. Okay, I'll call you Robin Rap. <laughs> Robin Rap. Robin Rap. You like that? Robin now, Rob. if you use that for anything, I want 15 percent. No problem. <laughs> okay, so what? What else do you do besides hair? Besides the whole salon thing? What are your interests? What do you? Do. What do I do? I do music. Oh, okay. Well, I'm a musician as well. Tell me what you do. What is, what's your music like? Well, it's like, like more like, it's a mixture, but okay. mostly like reality. Okay. Reality music. Real music. Not too, not too real, because you can't be too real sometimes. You know, the world don't yeah. know me yet, so you don't want to be too personal. Exactly. You don't want to leave too many people out. You got to pay for that. <laughs> Um, okay, so what do you do in music? Are you a rapper? Are you an engineer? Are you an artist? Are you a I'm mixer, not a rapper, producer? I'm an artist. You're, you're an artist. I'm okay, rapper. I say that too. You know, I'm not a singer, I'm an artist. Okay. I'm not a rapper, I'm an artist. All right, so you, so you do... I write my own music, mm -hmm. I produce my own music. Mm -hmm. you, know, you name it, I, I do it. Basically. Okay, when do it you comes mix to music, as well? I mix. You engineer? Engineer. All right, now, now, if y'all want some I studio sample. time, you have studio? I sample, yes, I do. If you want some studio time, y'all need to see Ralph, mm -hmm. okay? So y'all need to come to Twisted, get your studio, get your hair done, get it together, okay? All in one. <laughs> all in one, right? Yeah, all in one. <laughs> now you got to do is start selling outfits. You be able to surround sound kind of thing. Uh, get out of my head. Get out of my head. Get out of my head. <laughs> so tell me about the eyes. Where, where'd you get those from? Uh, those are pretty. And you're I blushing, know. I see it. I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> you get it from nah, your mom? No, I think I get it from my mom. Yeah. Uh -huh. I you believe so. You get it from your mom. Because, um, <laughs> okay. Okay, so in the future, which one, which path are you going to take first? Is it going to be hair or music? Music. Music, definitely? Music. All right, music all the way. I agree, music all the way. So um, I'd like to thank you so much for being on the show. I appreciate you. you taking the time out. Thanks for coming back. No know. problem. Thanks I told you, back. you know, we was going to do a bit. Right, <laughs> so um, much success to you in the future. And um, definitely, if y'all want your head done right and you want your music done right, come down to Twist It. Come see Rel. <laughs> he going to do you right. You're watching Shaqueen Live on MMTV. Sometimes the girls them on a condo alongside no other than the one she queen. We make the girls them mad when she walk Check on the scene. Mad. Well, tell them mad I now. queen. What them say now? Check it. Hi, I'm Deisha Jackson, Esquire, and you're watching Shaqueen live on MMTV. Yo, what's good? It's your boy Ferrara Chisholm, and right now you're watching Shaqueen live, MMTV. Holla. Oh. This is Dan Ski in the place to be. You're watching Shaqueen live on MMTV, baby. Hi, my name is Sherry Sample with Angel's Place, and you're watching Shaqueen live on MMTV. What's up, y'all? This is Jay Styles, and I'm here with Shaqueen live on MMTV. Hi, I'm Chanel, and you're watching Shaqueen live with MMTV. Hi, it's Deisha Jackson again, sports and entertainment lawyer extraordinaire, here to talk to you today about, do I need a permit or license to start my label? I know a lot of you out there in the entertainment industry, some of you, you know, you want to start a business and you don't know, um, where do I go? What should I do? Um, do I need to run down to some administrative body or to some office in order to file to say officially, I am a label. Well, you don't, not officially. You don't need to file anywhere to say that I have a music label or music label X is filed over here or there's some certification for it. But 
even though you don't have to file to be a music label, there are some things you still should consider because you wanna make sure that once you have your business up and going, you're protected um, in every way. So what are some of those things that you should think about? Sometimes people think they wanna be an agent or they wanna be a manager of a group um, that that may be part of your label. You should always check with your state to see if there are any licensing requirements or certifications for that. In addition to that, any business that you start, you want to avoid the personal liability when you can. Um, and how do you do that? Well, you can form your business into a particular entity. Some entities are a partnership or a limited liability corporation or a sole um, partnership, a sole corporation. Those are some entities that you can look into in order to protect your business and protect yourself. Um, from whatever may be out there, any kind of lawsuits, anyone claiming anything with regard to your work. So, what, what else should you think about? Or why is this so important? What are the advantages of basically having your own label? Uh, well, going indie, I guess that's, that's what they call it, going indie, um, which I like that, going indie. It's not Indiana, it's not Indianapolis but an independent label, go indie. Why should you go indie? Well, here's some of the benefits. Maybe a lot of you didn't think about these things. You work for yourself. You can stay true to yourself and your creativity, your music. You decide what music gets released and when. You don't have somebody else telling you, okay, this record's not going out till three years from now. You make all the decisions about production, arrangement, and direction. You license your music to other markets, and you keep all the profits. Of course, after you pay everybody who was involved in putting the song together. You own your rights to your product, as long as you don't give some of those rights away in order to raise money to do your project. That's something you need to think about too. You own your web profile, publicity, promotion material, images, and merchandising rights. You can charge whatever price you want, or you can give your music away for free. If you make, or if you have your own company, and this is your own indie label, you get to keep the bulk of the profit because you are the head honcho in charge. So, you should always remember to protect your music by registering your music with the Library of Congress and setting up your publishing company through one of the professional groups that are out there, ASCAP, BMI, or CSAC, if you have your own label. Well, again, I'm Deisha Jackson, Esquire, sports and entertainment attorney, Remember, if you have any legal questions or concerns and you want to consult, please feel free to give me a call. You are watching Shaqueen live on MMTV. It was silly of me to think that you would be everything I needed you to be. It was silly of me to think that you would do everything I needed you to do. It was silly of me to think that you would love me the way I needed to be. It was foolish of me. So silly for me. So silly for me. Queen and you're watching Shaqueen live on MMTV. I'm here at Twisted Salon with Sean, Hi. the wonderful, wonderful hairstylist to the stars. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, how are you, first of all? My I'm name wonderful. is Sean. Um, <laughs> well, actually, my birthday is coming up, so I will be 32. I know I look wow. like I'm about 21. <laughs> Everybody I gets said 19. 19. Okay, thank you. That's yes. even better. That's even better. 19. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Yes. So um, um, I'm originally me. from Connecticut, New Haven. Okay. 
Um, I've been doing hair since I was about 13 years old. The first person I ever gave me a curler set, her name was Andresha Shaw. Mm. Shout out to Drusha. Shout She's to one Drusha. of the best hairstylists in New Haven, Connecticut. So if you're ever out there, look her up. Right. Um, after her, I left her and started working with my god sister, Nanteza. Which is the, she's another, like, it's only two good hairstylists in Connecticut. Too. Okay. <laughs> and that's Tessa and Drusha. They, they're at war with each other. You now. heard that, Connecticut? Tessa and Drusha. Don't go nowhere else. That's it. <laughs> y'all know me, y'all know them. Okay, so that's wonderful. So what, what else happened after you did that? Uh, well, after I did that, I left and met a stylist that I was talking to. He's from D.C. and he actually introduced me to a lot of celebrities and okay, um, a lot of different makeup artists who's dealt with, yeah. like, Chrisette Michelle oh. and, Rihanna, right, and, yeah. yeah, you know, so I've been on the scene, but Big I've always stuff. played the black, the backdrop, excuse okay. me. And I um, actually did a lot of photo shoots for like a lot of models okay. for certain magazines, like they would call me in. Okay. I had a thing with Ford Magazine for a minute. Nice. I was with a lot of their models here. Have you done any other magazines? Um, Vibe Magazine, uh -huh. when I first came out in 2001, I did okay. a photo shoot for Mary J. Blige. Shout out to Mary. It was the July issue, which is on the cover, blue cover, uh -huh. she's on the <laughs> Sweet, mm -hmm. the blonde. So what, what was your part in that? What did you do? Um, just a little touch up. You know, okay. Hair was already done, but you know, they needed somebody to come touch her up. One of my best friends was a makeup artist at the okay, time. Okay, wonderful. What's her so, name? You know, his name is Terrence. His name is Terrence. Shout out to Terrence. Shout out to Terrence. He actually left me. He's in Arab Atlanta now. Oh, no. He's so, doing big things. He's actually doing really big things. <laughs> I'm really, really proud of Terrence, and I'm okay. trying to get to where they are. All right, so tell, tell me, all right, so everyone's doing big things. What's your next big step? My next big step, since I have um, have a few celebrity friends, and I have a few celebrity stylist friends, Jerry J, Sean Cameron, okay. um, what I want to do is basically open my own salon. Oh, I want to start my own chain of hair salon. Do you have a name in mind? Do you have yeah. a name? Okay, but you don't want to tell nobody, no. all right? Because I have to get my <laughs> name copyrighted yes, first. Yes, yes, tra trademark. Trademark, okay? trademark right. Don't let nobody say it. Anybody knows my name. Yeah, okay, and that's what I'm saying. fabulous cool. name. But you have to tell me, you have to tell me, though. Well, we won't tell, tell them, but you got to tell me. We'll tell you behind the back. Okay, so but, once you open your own salon, what, is it... Do you want to just do a salon and a, a place for barbers, or do you want to Well, do actually, my main focus is on healthy hair. Healthy hair, okay. You know, hair starts with the scalp. Yeah. It begins with the roots. If your scalp yeah. isn't healthy and your roots aren't healthy, your hair is not going to be healthy. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be my main focus. As far as the barbershop, I really don't want to get too in-depth with the barbershop okay. thing. Just more the You know, salon. because of the comfortability of women. Okay. A lot of women doesn't like the mixture of that. Like the yes. way this is, is a perfect setup for yes. a salon in the barbershop. Yeah. Well, well, speaking of this, you know, speaking of Twisted, tell me what you think about Gigi. I love Twisted. I love Gigi. She's <laughs> one of, she, no, honestly, I have actually have only known Gigi for a week. Wow. She's a very, like, she made me cry too. Aww. Because she's like a woman after my heart. She's, mm -hmm. she's very goal oriented. Mm -hmm. She's very hard working. Yes, she she's is. very independent. Mm -hmm. She's very loving. She's very caring. She's very stern. Mm -hmm. She plays no games, mm -hmm. but she'll <laughs> give you a game to play. Yeah. You yes, know? Yes. She's a fabulous, fabulous Latino female. Okay, okay, so shout out to all the fabulous, fabulous Latino, Latino women. females. <laughs> very, very fabulous. Yes, yes. And I give her a round of applause for Gigi. to Gigi <laughs> and her beautiful hair salon. She yes. actually did the community a really big favor yes. by opening a salon in the barbershop that also caters to the African American women. Yeah. Not just the Dominicans and Hispanics, which this neighborhood is predominantly based on. Yes, it is. You know? Yes. And when she gave me a chance to come in her shop, it, it it just it inspired me more. Did it make you cry? It did. <laughs> like I'm real weak sometimes when it comes to stuff like it's this. Okay, okay, it's okay. That's not my fault. Real men cry. Yeah. Real men cry. They do. <laughs> so okay, so um, I want to thank you so much thank for you. taking time out to talk to me. Of course. I wish you the best in everything that you do. And um, to Derek J. Ha ha. <laughs> Derek, you are kill me. Yes, but we love you, Derek. Shout out to Derek J. Derek, you know I love you. You're my best. You're the first celebrity as well as I've ever met, and you know where you are in my heart. Yeah, so thank you, Sean. I love you thank so you. much. Thank you, I love You're you, so wonderful. And thank y'all for taking the time out to come to Gigi's establishment. No, no problem. Seriously. All right, so you're thank watching you. Queen Live on MMTV. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Time for the girls, the man, a condo alongside no other than the one she queen. Who make the girls the mad when she walk on the scene. Well, tell them I queen. What them say now?
My homies left their blood on the cold concrete Along with empty shells All is not well The rest of my friends are blowing in the wind Feel my pain Tears fall on the paper when I'm writing My verses strike like lightning I guess you could say this is Zeus rhyming Niggas in the streets asking did I stop flowing My reply Seen too many caskets to get this rap shit I don't need a ghostwriter Already got multiple spirits sitting with me I get high when I'm low Still ain't reach my altitude Off we go again Are you with me on this quest? I can't help to look to the sky Wondering why So many unsolved homicides I can't lie I cried like a baby when my homie died So my verses will be recited Looking in the sky I just wanna fly So as high My wings will take me My wings will take me My wings will take me Looking in the sky I just wanna fly So as high My wings will take me My wings will take me I couldn't take the trip to heaven, that's why I take flights to get as high as I can get the Margaret. I'm that new thing on the market, like a marksman, I got my target. I guess you could say I'm shooting off at the mouth, trying to kill the game. I'm not playing, I'm coaching. I got so much pain in my heart, you can hear it in my flow. Like the Niger River, I just flow with so much emotion. If you want something bad enough, you'll get it. Question is, are you ready for it? The red carpet, bright lights, what I bring is something you can feel. Your Feel me? I'm out this world, my vocals are so heavenly. Make you get up out your seat like you felt the Holy Ghost, but I ain't preaching. Yeah, y'all should really listen. Low fly, you know what I'm saying? Looking in the sky, I just wanna fly so as high. My wings will take me. My wings will take me. My wings will take me. Looking in the sky, I just wanna fly so as high. My wings will take me. The honesty in my music left the door open for anybody to judge me. When I picked up the phone to call T, never expected him to say he could die in less than a week. I admit I got dreams, just scared to see what the future holds. To taste that milk and honey, I wanna be the biggest in the game. Even though it might bring pain, I wanna be a legend in the game. Where should I begin? Okay, let me reintroduce myself. I'm in. Looking in the sky, I just wanna fly so as high. My wings will take me. My wings will take me. My wings will take me. Looking in the sky, I just wanna fly so as high. My wings will take me. My wings will take me. watching Shaqueen live on MMTV and this is our season finale and with the season finale I just like to thank all the guests who have participated in the Shaqueen live show I like to thank all the crew all the directors all the producers and everyone who made this possible I hope that you all come back with me in the new year in 2012 better more diva ish with more haters so 
I'd like to thank you from me personally, Shaqueen, for watching Shaqueen Live on MMTV, and I wish you the best in the new year. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. We'll be right back. Well, this is time for the girls them on a candle alongside no other than the one she queen. We'll make the girls them mad when she walk on the scene. Well, tell them I queen. What am I saying now? And we're back, and you're watching Shaqueen Live on MMTV. And that's a wrap, guys. It's the season finale, and we're done. And I'd like to thank all the guests tonight. I'd like to thank Vashawn Lamar. I'd love to thank Gigi. I'd like to thank Sean. I'd like to thank everyone else who participated in the Shaqueen Live show, including the wonderful, wonderful Rel at Twisted Hair Salon. So everyone, have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful 2012, and let's be better in the new year. I wish you the best, and you know you've been watching Shaqueen Live on MMTV. Peace. Don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. I'm still, I can see the bright lights.